Hey guys, Saucery back again with another gold making guide. I've been getting a lot of messages lately from newer players who are leveling or players who have just hit the level cap and have no idea how to make any gold and they're just getting started and they're looking for some kind of direction. So this video is more or less directed at the newer players playing the game. So chances are if you're watching this video you've probably looked around in several different places on how to make some gold and people probably have told you the best way to make gold is to play the auction house and whatnot and the auction house is a very good way to make gold. But if you're just leveling or you have hit the level cap, chances are you've spent all the gold you've already made training your mounts, flying mounts, etc. along the way. So you're not really going to be able to play the auction house uh, really well at all if you don't have any gold because you've spent it all. So if you're just leveling, my suggestion to you, the best way to make gold is to get to gathering professions. I honestly would go with skinning as one due to the fact that the skins are always definitely higher in price than uh, what ore and herbs are. For example, like light leather is probably on average about 20 gold on a high side and lucky day you could probably get it for 30 to 40. Um, other skins such as heavy, thick, rugged are usually between the 40 and 100 range depending on the day of the week and how many players online and your server etc. But it's, it's generally a decent amount of money. And for your second gathering profession, it's really just what you prefer. Personally, I like herbalism, but mining is definitely a very solid uh, second choice for your gathering professions. Especially when the ores are selling high. For example, cobalt's usually a high in demand ore and sells anywhere from 100 to 200 gold on most servers. For a stack, that is, not a single ore. And speaking of single ores or single items in general, um, usual general thumb is to check to see how much a stack is selling and also to check to see how much a single item is selling on the auction house for whatever you're selling. Generally sometimes you can find the single items selling for twice as much as what they would in a stack. So say a stack of ore for example is selling for 20 gold but the single item is selling for 2. You're obviously going to want to sell it for singles at that point in time because you're going to get twice as much for what you have gathered. So while leveling your low level guy, just make sure you don't let any of your professions fall behind. You're going to want to keep them up to current with your guy. It may slow your leveling progression down a little bit, but not really at the same time because you do get experience for mining nodes and they also do benefit from the double bonus experience from being rested. And if you're on a higher level character looking to do some gathering, you're almost always better off gathering lower level materials because they're usually almost always worth more on the auction house than the current expansions materials. Now if you're a higher level and you're just starting out making gold, I find one of the best ways to get started, or if you only have a few minutes to play and don't really want to get involved into too much, is to clear low level dungeons. There are a few things about this though that you should take into consideration. First thing is, it'll always be more profitable clearing low level dungeons if you are an enchanter yourself, or have an enchanter in your group. If you invite another player to your group who has enchanting, they do not need to be in the dungeon with you, they can actually be on the other side of the world and you'll still gain benefit from their uh, disenchant items option. If you notice in my video here, I'm in a party for that because I myself am not an enchanter. The second thing is, before you go out to do this, go and check the auction house to find out what cloth is selling for the most of the time. You want to be farming the dungeon that is selling the most profitable cloth and I'll let you guys know which dungeons are dropping what during this video. And I will be also posting my other findings uh, for each dungeon that I do in this video to kind of give you an idea of what you'll be expecting for gold when you clear them. But also one thing to take into consideration on the day that I recorded this, nothing was selling for real high, everything was average for a stack of cloth, uh, which is around 20 gold a stack, which is still very good. And I do frequently sell a lot of lower level stacks of cloth, between 50 and 80 gold a stack. So like I said, just keep an eye out on your auction house before you go out farming, because you're obviously going to want to sell for whatever is going for the highest amount. So if you're going to be farming linen cloth or wool cloth, the dungeon that I like to clear for this is Shadowfang Keep. You'll be getting a little bit more wool than you will uh, linen, but that shouldn't be an issue unless all you're going for is linen, in which case I suggest you clear Ragefire Chasm. So after a full clear of Shadowfang Keep, uh, here are my drops and findings. 104 wool cloth, which I sold for 115 gold 50 silver. 46 linen cloth, which I sold for 45 gold. I got a pattern, which sold for 78 gold and the enchanting materials, which I disenchanted, sold for 201 gold and 20 uh, silver. So for a total, I made 440 gold and 22 silver with enchanting. If you didn't have enchanting, you'd probably be looking for around uh, 238 gold, 50 silver for the dungeon, which still is quite good. So next up is silk cloth. If you intend on farming silk cloth, Scarlet Monastery, the chapel side, is where you should be going. And after a full clear of this dungeon, here are my drops. I got 4 gold in vendor trash. 
95 silk cloth, which I sold for 160 gold. I found a jade gem, which sold for 3 gold, and my enchanting materials were 57 gold. So total with enchanting, 281 gold. Without enchanting, you'd be looking at 224. So if you're looking to farm Mage Weave, the best place to do this is Stratholm. You can either do this in the live side or the dead side, as they both drop a decent amount of Mage Weave, but the live side will drop more due to it having more humanoids and undead creatures. So for this video here, I did clear both sides just to show you guys the findings from both sides, and we're going to start with the dead side first. I got a total of 7 gold from Vendor Trash, 89 Mage Weave, which I sold for 79 gold. Uh, one pattern that I found was Enchant and Holy, which doesn't really go for much, I sold that for gold as well. I got one Essence of Undeath, which sold for 4 gold, and I ended up getting 155 gold in Enchanting Materials. So that's a total of 246 gold with Enchanting Materials, and only a total of 91 gold without Enchanting Materials. Okay, so for the live side of Stratholm, here are my findings. I got 13 gold in Vendor Trash, I found 159 Mage Weave, which sold for 138 gold, an Enchanting Pattern, which was Intellect to uh, Two-Hander, which sold for 10 gold, Star Ruby for 11 gold, 50 silver, and Enchanting Materials for 123 gold. So that's a total of 295 and a half gold with Enchanting, and only 172 gold, 50 silver without Enchanting. So as you can see, the live side obviously does drop quite a bit more Mage Weave, and has a few other things like Crusader Orbs, which if you get them, they sell anywhere between 5 and 20 gold on the auction house, or if you're an enchanter or knows someone with the Enchant Weapon Crusader, you can have a scroll enchanted with that, and they usually sell for anywhere between 150 and 300 gold on the auction house, depending on your server. And then we have Ruin Cloth. There are several dungeons where you can farm this in, but I find Blackrock Spire to be the best place to get it. For this video, I cleared both Upper and Lower Spire, and I would suggest you do the same to prevent any dungeon lockouts. I prefer to start with Upper Spire, and here are my findings from Upper Blackrock Spire. So for Vendor Trash, I got 24 gold, I got 118 Rune Cloth, which sold for 126 gold, 2 Aqua Marines, which sold, which sold for 16 gold, and an Enchanting Pattern, which was Superior Impact, uh, that sold for 4 gold. Total Enchanting Materials went for 134 gold, 70 silver, so a total of everything together for Upper Spire, with enchanting, 304 gold, 70 silver, without enchanting, you'd only be looking at about 170 gold. Now for Lower Blackrock Spire, my findings were 30 gold and a half in Vendor Trash, 204 Ruin Cloth, which sold for 210 gold, 2 Aqua Marines again, for 16 gold, 107 gold in enchanting materials. I got an alchemy pattern which sold for 10 gold. I also picked up two pets on the way of clearing this dungeon, the smolderweb uh, hatchling and the warg pup. Both pets are actually bind on pickup, so you're going to have to open up your uh, battle pet windows, find the pets in there, right click on them, uh, set it to put in cage. Once they're put in a cage, they do become uh, bind on equip or whatever, so you're actually able to sell them on the auction house at that point. So I sold the spider for 20, the work pup for 12. With enchanting materials, I made a total of 406 gold. Without, I'm looking at 298 and a half. And just in case you're wondering, both Blackrock Spire instances together total out at uh, 710 gold, 70 silver with enchanting. 468 gold, 50 silver without enchanting. Which isn't bad at all, considering both of these dungeons together only take a couple minutes to clear. And the total amount I made during this entire video was 1,973 gold and 42 silver for 5 dungeons with enchanting. Which isn't bad at all considering most of these dungeons only took 3-6 to six minutes to clear. I'd say that's a pretty good haul of gold. So if you're looking for netherweave cloth or frostweave cloth, I already have two videos relevant to both of those cloths on my channel. I'll also be making a third video for the frostweave cloth as well, which I'll leave an annotation on this video at a later date, so just click those if you need them. Well guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button if you enjoyed this. More videos to come in the future, and happy farming.